Hi everybody, today I want to talk a little bit about um, some of our field prep, uh, getting our beds tilled and getting them ready for planting. Um, what you see out here is spaded ground, so we ran our mechanical spader um, through this ground, um, a single pass um, at the right moisture, and you can see that it made pretty good tilth, right, so pretty good structure on that soil. Um, if you want to get a slightly closer look, um, you can see the soil is fairly dry on the surface here. Um, but if I dig down a little bit, you can see that we still have some fairly good moisture down below. So this field was spaded, and then what you see out in the field right now are tractor tire lines. And this is something that we do to try to keep our lines as straight as possible um, when we're bedding up. We're a small enough farm and operation that we don't have GPS on our tractors like many of the larger growers do. And this is a way for us to just make sure to help ourselves um, keep our lines straight, which beyond being kind of aesthetically pleasing to some of us, um, it is very functional for all of our following steps of cultivation with a tractor, planting with a tractor and things like that. So in this instance, this pass was done as a single pass with a tractor. Oftentimes we'll combine it with our pass with the fertilizer applicator um, so that we don't have this extra pass uh, of marking lines. We'll actually mark our lines while we're using our fertilizer applicator. So this is our fertilizer applicator here. Um, the brand is Clamco, so oftentimes they're referred to as Clamco um, spreaders. Um, but basically all it is is it has a big hopper, and this is where we put all our fertilizer into. Um, from this hopper, it has a number of drops. So this one has four different drops. Um, and inside, there's a shaft that spins that basically helps grab that fertilizer and put it into these drops. So the fertilizer comes from this hopper through our drops and then into the open chute here and comes out the back. The chisel point on the front makes just a small furrow for that fertilizer to sit into um, so that we're really getting a nice band of fertilizer right where we want it. These, this fertilizer applicator is spread up, set up for two lines behind our tractor. On our tractor, we normally have two beds. So we're putting one line of fertilizer for each bed, even though that bed will get two different lines of crops. Um, but that's adequate for, for our needs. So in this situation, um, with the setup that we have and the fertilizer that we're using, we're putting down probably approximately 40 to 50 pounds of nitrogen per acre. Um, and that is some way, somewhat of a standard application rate for us um, in a diverse, diversified vegetable situation where we're growing 50 or 60 different crops. Um, we find that that amount um, once annually is enough to just give our plants that little extra bit of health no matter what crop is in there. Um, we'll definitely be over fertilizing for some of our crops and really under fertilizer fertilizing for some of our crops, but this is one of the trade-offs that we have to make in a diversified system where we can't really pinpoint for every single bed all the different crops that are gonna, that are gonna grow. That said, putting down about 40 or 50 pounds of nitrogen for certain crops is well under what can, could commercially be, um, be applied in a conventional setting. You know, in, in crops like broccoli or cauliflower, folks can be putting up to 150 to 200 pounds of supplemental nitrogen um, just to get that crop to grow. In our case, we really think about this as a little bit of an extra food for the plant. Um, most of the bulk of what we're gonna give to our plant is gonna come from the cover crop that we grew the year before that we've mowed and incorporated into the soil. That will break down over the course of the year and sometimes add upwards of 100 to 150 pounds of nitrogen per crop. Um, as well as uh, mineralization um, of the soil organic matter. So the soil organic matter is that organic material that's in the soil um, that's in a more stable form um, but breaks down slowly over time. So when we think about managing our organic system, the soil organic matter in the soil is like our long-term food for our crops. And we expect that some percentage of that is gonna become available each year to the crop um, and help it grow. So again, while oftentimes I think people think about, uh, when you think about sustainable farming, you think about organic farming, you think about you know, how are you uh, not bringing too many outside inputs into the farm. And there's lots of exciting 
ways that people are trying to do that, but on a production scale, given our economic realities right now where there's so many demands for the crops, it's really hard to grow an organic crop that you can take to market, especially if you need to crop that ground twice a year, as many folks do in California, to do that without a little bit of extra fertility. So now we have these beds all fertilized, and now the next step is we're gonna come through with our Lulliston cultivator, um, and we're gonna hill that soil right up into a small mound, into what we call listed beds. Um, so you can see here, this is the line where our fertilizer was shanked in. Um, you can even see, as we came to the end of the bed, a couple of the little pellets sitting on top. It's really hard to find this stuff once it's in the soil. Um, but, you know, we tend to shank it uh, just a couple inches down on these beds. Um, now, when we throw the soil up from the Lulliston cultivator, we might worry that we're gonna bury it too deep, but for us, that's not a total concern. Um, the next step after we go ahead and list these beds up is we'll go ahead and flatten them back out and keep a nice tight shape for our, um, for our raised beds. Um, and they will be roughly of the profile that you see here. It'll just be a little bit tighter um, and a little bit wider. Um, and so by the time we've done all of those passes, the fertilizer still is gonna end up in that kind of three to four inch ra range below the bed top. The other thing is that, again, we're applying this single row of fertilizer for both of our plant lines. Um, and we're expecting that the roots will be able to access this, not just at the surface, not just um, uh, four inches down, but as it dissolves and mineralizes, becomes available, that you know, our roots will follow that kind of wherever it is in the soil. Um, so that depth doesn't totally matter for us. This is also what we would call a pre-plant uh, uh, a pre-plant fer uh, fertilizer application, so we're doing it before we plant. You can use those same shanks to put it in after you plant, but we only do a pre-plant. Um, and one other thing that we might do in this scenario is actually water these beds, pre-irrigate them before planting, and in that case, we can start that mineralization process of that fertilizer so that by the time the plants get into the ground, they're really ready to grab it. One thing I want to talk about in terms of as we got, get ready to plant um, is just how the soil looks and, and, and how, it, how it's been prepared. So these beds look pretty nice when we look out across the field. Um, you can see they're, they're pretty smooth and pretty flat. Um, but well, one thing that we really emphasize here on an agroecological basis is that we don't want to overwork the soil. We know that we need to do some tillage to make it easy for our equipment to move through, to make it easy to plant, but we could do so much tillage and turn this soil into real dust um, that would take away from the potential of the soil ecology to do the work that it needs to do. So even though this looks like, again, very smooth tillage, we didn't make a rototiller pass on these beds. Um, there's nothing particularly wrong with rototillers, but if you overuse them uh, and work the soil too much, you can really pulverize it and, and turn it into a real dust. Um, what that looks like is I'll come over here to the road, and the road where we drive our tractors all the time, I'm gonna show you a difference, and you see 
This is blowing away just as I'm walking. And I'm gonna compare that with the soil that's actually in our beds. And even though this is the same soil, you can see the difference in aggregation. You can see the difference in quality between a soil that's been pulverized and a soil that's been cared for. So what I really want you to pay attention to, to well, what I want you to want to show you here is that in a handful of soil like this, we don't want it to be again perfectly sandy like a beach. We want to see all of these different sizes of aggregates and a nice distribution of them where there's some really fine particles and some slightly larger particles. And that's an indication to us that there are these kind of glues, these organic glues in the soil that are holding it together. And it's those glues that end up feeding our plants and feeding the microbes in the system um, to really make sure that uh, our plants are getting the nutrients they need. And while you might think this is, you know, a clod, right, that you might see, you know, we, I'm not just saying we don't have clods, right, like this on the edge of the field, this is going to be a clod where I can't really, like it's hard to break it apart in my hand, but this, this is a soil aggregate that as I just apply a little gentle pressure, it turns right into that nicely tilled soil that we like for planting.